reply and reply to these five questions that have been asked. First, the first question, if I remember rightly, was from Mr. Cox from the Netherlands on sanctions and Russia. I am absolutely convinced that we can't go very far back towards the Cold War. And I am convinced that anything which is contrary to international law should be condemned. But having taken note of these violations of international law, we need to find ways to work together to find agreement and to bring things back into line with international law through dialogue, through negotiation. Until now, these sanctions have not been effective. And it is my view that we cannot speak of any security, shared security architecture in Europe without including Russia. And I therefore consider that the way forward, slowly, step by step, in the near future, is to make sure the Minsk agreement is implemented and to show that this will merely be the first step on the way out of the sanction, sanctions and towards improving the relationship between the European Union and Russia. Now on to the second question. Which was raised by our colleague from the EPP. Of course, the communist model was a failure. Nobody would disagree. But I would say to you that the neoliberal model has also been a failure. We need to find the way to bring Europe to social co cohesion and to it, bring it back to its basic values, social co cohesion, democracy, and solidarity. Now, I will try and reply to the question of when we're going to get out of the crisis. This, I think, is something which is of concern to millions of my fellow Greeks. There is so much that the Greek people have done over these last few years. So much they've suffered, and many say that they've suffered in spite of applying the programs. The real truth is that the programs weren't very well programmed, and that is why they were badly implemented. Now, for the Greek economy to get back to growth will require more than the way that the measures to be applied were so ill-assessed. For the first time now, we have a moderate adjustment program, a program which does provide the prospect of getting out of the crisis and out of the recession, especially if after Greece fulfills its commitments, then our partners fulfill their commitments for their part. And of course, that is to do with lessening the debt burden. On the 24th of May, we had the meeting of the Eurogroup where we spoke of the fact that it shouldn't be 15% more than GDP which is spent. And I think that this decision is a just decision, just not just for Greece, but also for the whole of Europe, all the European countries. For if we are pro-European, if we are Europhiles, we shouldn't just be trying to get concessions for our country. What we need to be doing is trying to achieve 
a good deal and prosperity for all the peoples of Europe. And so we need to look at the public debt of other countries, not just of Greece. This is of primary importance. What was decided for Greece was that we would have a mutualization of the debt and that that could lead us towards a European solution. But at the same time, everything that was decided for Greece needs to become more specific and more immediate. We shouldn't have to wait years to see the application and the decision on things which seem to us perfectly logical and clear today. Now the question from our colleague from Estonia on human rights and the Geneva Convention. Here I'd like to be very clear. Throughout this whole period, the Greek government and Greece have found themselves in a very hard place. On the one hand, we had to adhere to the European conventions. We had to receive refugees. And at the same time, we had to face a very unilateral approach. In other words, from the time when our northern frontiers were closed unilaterally, the danger of Greece becoming the place where thousands of people would be locked in five to seven thousand people arriving every day. That was a very serious danger. We had to find a way out of that danger, out of that pressure cooker. And we found effective solutions in providing our own solutions to this refugee crisis in res full respect of international law, human rights, and the Geneva Convention. And today, every asylum application is taken on a case-by-case -case basis. Each individual who is on any Greek island has their rights respected according to the Geneva Convention and international law. And obviously, courts, appeals, those who study under European law each individual case of each individual application for asylum makes an ad hoc individual decision taking the case of each migrant, each refugee, individually. As for the question on the principle of accountability, I would say that since the beginning of this grand adventure, this economic crisis, we had elections after the signing of the program agreement. The Greek people were able to decide with all the cards on the table in full knowledge of what they were deciding upon. The government was there in order to apply the agreement which was signed. We received a mandate in 2015. Back then, it was a mandate to negotiate. We did negotiate. 
we achieved a compromise and then we went back to the Greek people for them to judge. And in September 2015, the Greek people gave us their request to continue. The agreement was very difficult, the program was very difficult, but we were trying to protect their social rights and the most vulnerable groups. I hope we will achieve that. I hope we're not going to have to cross any red lines, the red lines that we laid down when we signed that agreement. The fifth question I was asked was from our colleague from Poland. That's a very interesting question about what was the basic mistake. Was it a mistake by the European Union? Well, not only the European Union. Are there others who are responsible for the crisis, not just our partners? Are there Greek mistakes as part of that? I don't like pointing the finger at our partners at every turn. It's obvious that many of the mistakes are within Greece, Greek management. The fact that the Greek governments were not able as soon as Greek, Greece became a member of the Eurozone and in those years of growth, the Greek governments were more concentrated on organizing the Olympics, obviously, rather than on establishing a modern Greek state. And uh, you know what that led to over indebtedness and everything else. Obviously, uh, Greece was also in error. The Greek governments, the day when Greece was no longer able to borrow money on the markets, when we were no longer soluble. We then found ourselves leading from that lack of solvency to the current situation. At the time, Greek unemployment was slightly higher than unemployment in Germany, it was 7%. 7.5% in Greece. Today, in, in Germany, it's below 7% and it's above 20% in Greece. And that is the clear sign of the failure of the policy that was applied to us, the austerity policy. And all this began with the fact that Greece was in such deep debt. Now, what was the main error of the European Union, you asked? The main mistake made by the European Union was that the European Union didn't have confidence in the European institutions. It allowed technocrats to take the decisions. It's not the politicians who took the decisions, it was the technocrats. And that means that today Europe faces a political crisis, a democratic crisis, a crisis of confidence. European citizens no longer trust Europe. And this is the consequence of failed policies, not only in Greece, but in Spain, in Portugal, and in other countries too, in the European South. I think there's one question that I haven't replied to, or have I, have I responded to them all? No, I'm being told I've replied to all the questions. If I have time, I would be delighted to reply to any other questions too. Oh, time is over, absolutely over. Well, thank you very much again for being with us today.
and look forward to continuing our, our uh, cooperation in the next future. And, uh, well, this is the, the brings the, to the end of the questions to the Prime Minister. And, uh, well, uh, members, on the questions list who have been present in the hemicycle, but who have not been able to ask their question, may submit it to the table office for answer in writing and publication in the official report. Thank you very much. Now we have the, I understand that uh, uh, Mrs. Butler uh, wishes to make a personal statement.